Well, hello, and here today on the Rusty Glove Box, what we're going to do today is I've been working on a special project here. It's uh, something that I've never done before, and I saw it on YouTube, and uh, I want to give a, a shout out to a gentleman, John Austin. He was the one that kind of helped plant this bug in my ear and so anyway John I do appreciate it y'all check his channel out I'll put a link down below well here's a pile of the remnants that I didn't use on the build uh, the front fork down to the back half of one of the bikes and uh, the upper tube well this is a recumbent trike and uh, I tell you what, it has been really a fun project. Uh, I've kind of strayed away from his design and, and just kind of went off on something of my own, but I took a lot of the information from his uh, design, like the uh, front axle, the uh, caster, camber, uh, all of that. That was very useful. And uh, so anyway, I do plan on building another one that's going to be like the new and improved. But uh, anyway, this is it for right now. Here on the axle, I have it at about an 18 degree caster. That seemed to work pretty well for me. Uh, the camber setup. I think you can see that the spindles, they're at a 15 to 16 degree angle. And here at the bottom, uh, I have about one degree negative uh, camber on my spindle. And what I used was two bicycle uh, necks, machined them to where they were both the same length, and then just used the handlebar neck there and use the tie rod in so that they both steer. But the reason why I gave it the uh, camber and caster, I think you can see from this shot that uh, you have the, the wheels that lean out or lean in and the inside wheel turns more than the outside wheel. I hope you can see that little fluorescent pink string. Uh, what I was doing there was to set up my geometry on my steering. You just stretch a string from the spindle to your rear axle and uh, kind of triangulate that and it makes uh, the placement of the steering arm on the spindle easy to locate. What I did right here is I just used the back half of the bicycle. This was an old 26 inch that had the inch and three eighths wide back tire. Uh, three speed in the hub. I do not like those. You just don't get enough gearing. And uh, I do plan on sourcing a different rear wheel for this so that I get a wider range of uh, gearing. On the uh, pedal assembly, like John's design, I fixed it to where you can move this forward and backward to accommodate different uh, height of people or different leg length, something like that. And the crank pedal or the crank uh, sprocket that I ended up using for right now is a 28 tooth. I had experimented with first the big one was the 46, the next one down was a 44, one down from that was a 32, and I believe the one that I have on it now is a uh, 28. And it makes for some pretty easy pedaling. I took the original handlebars that I had with the bike and kind of cut bits and pieces and sort of got what I'm going to call a modified sort of stingray handlebar design. And I'm going to look and see if I can't find some 
small, short rise stingray handlebars to replace these that I have now. Uh, I think that would look a little more finished. There's nothing wrong with this, it works fine. But uh, for a test, I think this worked out pretty well for me. So anyway guys, come back next time and we'll see what kind of progress we can make on the track uh, for the next go round. As always, I appreciate you coming by today. This is Rusty Glove Box and I'm out of here.